Uh, welcome to everyone. Thank you everyone for taking the time out of your day to join us today for our presentation called Embracing Open for All, Initiatives in Support of Kosokunos. Um, today we're going to be discussing the concept of Kosokunos as it applies to your own institutional and local vision for open education um, and the ideas of interconnectedness, transformation, and sharing. Uh, we're joining you today from Thompson Rivers University. Thompson Rivers University campuses are located on the traditional and unceded territory of Tkamloops to Shkwetmuk uh, in Kamloops and the Tikal within Williams Lake. Uh, these are within Shkwetmuk Ulu, the traditional and unceded territory of the Shkwetmuk peoples. The region we serve also extends into the territories of the Stalpium, Inkaklatma, Newhawk, Shilkotin, Dalke, and Silex peoples. So one of the purposes of our presentation today is to share the concept of Quetzalcoatlus. Uh, and so this is a Shukwetmustine term. And the term means that we are all related and interconnected with nature, each other, and all things. Quetzalcoatlus is one of the principles that guides TRU's, TRU's institutional vision statement. And it flows through all that we do, including our approach to open education. TRU has been growing, sustaining a culture of open on and off campus for over 40 years. And this culture of open includes valuing inclusion, transformation, sharing, and connection. So during this presentation today, we'll share how the open education initiatives at TRU are interconnected. They provide many opportunities for faculty and staff to enter, offer collegial support, and uh, take on an approach that we hope is sustainable and relational. So what we'll do to start off with, uh, we'll, we've acknowledged the place that we're at. I'm going to next up discuss or uh, introduce the team that'll be presenting today. We'll tell you a little bit about TRU. Um, and I know seeing some of these familiar names in the chat, you're already familiar with our campus, but maybe not everyone is. Uh, we'll discuss the evolving nature and scope of open initiatives at TRU, and then talk about the impact and connections of that uh, on our campus. So this is our marvelous team who put this presentation together for you today and who are all interconnected with each other and the campus as well as the wider community. Running our uh, slides today is Ken Monroe. He's a senior instructional designer in open learning. Uh, next up, we have Brenda Smith, who's our open education librarian. Uh, my name is Catherine. I'm the director of the Center for Excellence in Learning and Teaching. And Christine Miller, who I'm not sure is quite running from class yet, but she's uh, the Open Education Grant Facilitator and also an Assistant Teaching Professor uh, in the University Employment Preparation Program. So the four of us came together to describe some of the exciting activities that we have going on. But the first thing we'd like to do is learn a little bit about all of you. So I'm gonna pop a link in the chat that you can follow, uh, but you can also put the, go to menti.com and put the code in, in the screen. Uh, but you should be able to pick up that direct link in the chat, and that might be the easiest way. Uh, or you can see what Ken's typing on the screen there, 84198019. And then answer two questions for us. We want you to know, how did you first get involved in open? Just give us a few words. And then um, the next question is, we want to know where you're from. What's your location? So give us a couple minutes and I'll pull up the uh, the slide so that Ken can share. Um, okay. So now open. Is it here? Open. Yeah, open. Okay. So can I just send you the link to the uh, the live results? So you want to pull those up? So this is great. So this is how we all first got involved in open. I asked to join a committee, lots of us. Um, oh, and people are putting locations and I should have just waited and let you click next to the next slide, but that's okay too. Um, BC Campus OER. Um, do you wanna hit refresh there, Ken? There's lots popping up.
independent research, wonderful. Project managing a sustainability project, hired at a center. Awesome. Developing an open course, and that's something we definitely want to support here. Project managing a sustainability project. This is great. And so our next one is our little map. So hopefully you've been able to click forward. Ken, can you click over to the map of where folk are at? Nice. So we've got uh, some good population. We've got some folk coming from all over the place here, uh, which is nice to see. We're not all BC based and somebody has a cool location somewhere it looks like in France or Germany. But we're seeing we're mostly North American based. Really nice. Um, so that's, I think, all I've got. I'm going to turn it back over to, to Ken. Okay, um, yeah, the sad thing I always see in that picture of our introductions, it reminds me that I have to wear glasses now, uh, which is kind of sad. Um, at any rate, uh, about TRU, Thompson Rivers University. So Thompson Rivers University is a comprehensive learning-centered sustainable university that serves its regional, national and international learners. Um, you can see in the province of British Columbia, we're located uh, just uh, a little bit um, east of Vancouver, and we have a satellite campus up here in Williams Lake. Um, the physical campus in Kamloops has about 14,000 students, and then we also have an open learning division, which uh, has uh, another 11,000 students enrolled. And when we talk about a comprehensive university, uh, uh, you'll learn a little bit more about our history, but we do all sorts of different types of programs, including adult basic education, trades, uh, traditional academic, programs up and in, into the master's level, as well as some more vocational types of, of um, courses like law and nursing and respiratory therapy. Um, with regards to open education, uh, I'm just going to um, take you to a, uh, a different H5P uh, timeline that I built. And um, we'll just take a peek at that. And it will give you a history of what uh, the two institutions have done. So in the 1970s, two institutions were created. Uh, Caribou College was founded to serve Kamloops in the region. And then the Open Learning Institute was created to provide edu educational opportunities uh, through a distance education. And you can see the funky computer logo uh, at the time. Um, in the 80s, the instit institutions both grew separately. Uh, in Kamloops, Caribou College became the University College of the Caribou, and the Open Learning Institute became the Open Learning Agency uh, with two core assets, Knowledge Network and o BC Open University. Open at the time was defined similarly to the UK's Open University, which was more to provide access to people who couldn't come to an institution. In 2005, the two institutions were amalgamated uh, to create Thompson Rivers University as we are now. And, uh, and with that, the Open Learning Division brought its long history of open education to the full degree granting institution. Uh, and, and the four pillars of open were updated to include accessibility, flexibility, choice, and credibility. Um, then when we started in, in 2012, um, the open education initiatives began to pick up steam. And we'll just listen to uh, uh, some a description by Dr. Erwin DeVries, who is the past Associate Vice President of Open Learning and the Director of Curriculum Development. Are you open learning? You steeped in open learning back to 1978 with the original Open Learning Institute. When I started in 2010, the Instructional Design Group in particular was connected to BC campus and was doing a lot of talking and exploring around OER. We started with the OERU in 2012 with a huge international meeting at TRU. And as part of that, we developed a collaborative course using OER. This kind of got momentum going. Um, there were collaborations with IDs, the video unit, production, students, the academic departments, the provost's office, library, Center for Teaching and Learning, and other universities worldwide. As we got more deeply into that, we went for funding from BC campus and got going full on with other open textbooks and more engaged with uh, open educational practices and all this continues to the present day. 
Great. And, and so again, these are uh, listed below where John Belshaw and William Little were a couple of our early um, adopters or, or creators of, of OER. And just to let you know, this H5P element is also uh, posted in the presentation document. So you'd be able to uh, download the file and, and have access to the links which I've created in this. Um, so in 2014, we, I call this sort of contributing to the OE cause. As we grew more open and, and, and brought in more people, um, we did different things, recognizing the need to do stuff. And uh, here's a, a short clip from Brian Lamb, our Director of Learning Technology and Innovation. In 2014, 2015, we had Alan Levine at TRU for a fellowship, and we were struggling with ways to get more activity on the open web. We knew that tools like WordPress had a steep learning curve and there were also privacy concerns. So Alan, as part of his fellowship at TRU, ended up building a set of simplified authoring tools that did not require identifiable info and were easier to use. And uh, all I really did was come up with the SPLOT acronym and we never really fully decided what it meant, but it's something like simplest possible learning online toolkit. And you can see all the tools that Alan has been building over the years at splot.ca. TRU Open Learning is also one of the founders of the OpenETC, which is a community of educators and technologists who are sharing and collectively supporting open technology beyond the LMS in British Columbia. We're a co-op not a service. What we ask for among our participants is that you contribute back. And that contributing back can be helping others. It can be providing templates, writing tutorials, resources, whatever it is that you can contribute back to the community. Uh, as of now, the OpenETC uh, on our WordPress multi-site is supporting, I think, around 3,000 distinct websites and also quite a large growing number of Mattermost spaces. And you can learn more about the OpenETC at opened.ca. Then when you moved into around 2018 and we're sort of upping the ante and making connections. And so we continued to work with our friends at BC campus and, and numerous uh, administrators and faculty have been recognized by BC campus for their contribution to the open education uh, community in the province. Um, Internally, through our provost office, we created our own OE grants program for the creation of uh, OER by faculty. Um, with a registrar, we began mapping all of the courses for zero textbook costs and have marked them into the university calendar. And then we also created an open education working group to serve as a forum to compile and share open educational uh, initiatives amongst faculty and students. Which brings us close to the 2020 um, area now, and, and we're starting to look at more research and uh, into open education and open educational research practices. And uh, we'll just listen to a short clip from Michelle Harrison, Dr. Michelle Harrison, who is involved in this. Hi, everyone. I'm Michelle Harrison, and I'm an instructional designer and assistant professor at TRU Open Learning. And I have been involved in supporting the development of OER for many years. As TRU continues to expand its OER and OEP initiatives, research is an important aspect as we try to gauge the impact of adopting new practices, including design frameworks, platforms, and open pathways and programs. Over the past few years, myself and other colleagues have been working on research projects that consider how OEP impacts the institution at various levels. This includes student uses of OER, student perceptions of OEP, and themselves as open practitioners the role and values of instructional support in advocating, and the development of a tool to assess the impacts of OEP at the institutional level. So the question might be, how do we take a critical approach to OEP that allows us to open up new spaces for learning and teaching while balancing other issues such as privacy and safety? All right, and so that sort of brings us to a close of our 50 year journey of two separate institutions to becoming uh, one institution and a sort of a medium sized one at that in terms of how we've addressed open over the course of time. And so we'll just uh, go back to our presentation. And carry on. So students are at the center of everything that we do. 
Um, our true Sioux, our student union, became interested in open textbooks in about 2016, and they have been great collaborators ever since. They led the charge for advocating for OER grants, and Ken and I presented with them at every single faculty council, the Budget Committee of Senate, Academic prior Planning and Priorities Committee, I think it's called, to build support for having an OER grant program. They've been active participants in our Open Education Working Group, and they've supported the library's open access week activities and also helped co really led the co-organization of our 2020 Open Ed Week event just before everything locked down. In 2018, Trusu established Awards of Excellence, which where they give out up to four awards every year to staff, faculty, or administration who had demonstrated excellence in different areas. And at least one faculty or administrator who is an open supporter has been recognized every year since that time for a total of eight people getting awards from them, which is kind of exciting. But most students are involved in OER creation and adaption, usually as research assistants for professors working on adapting and creating OER. And they do anything from writing actual sections, press book editing, creating images, videos, and H5P content. They've also been involved in attending focus groups and OER writing sprints that we've held so that they could share their ideas about projects, what they want in a text, what they don't want in a text, um, suggestions on organization, um, things that they want included, general plan sharing and the planning of it. And the other way that they're becoming more and more involved is through open pedagogy projects. So this is starting to grow across campus. While there are some larger projects such as the UN SDG Open Pedagogy Fellowship, which we'll talk about later, it's mostly individual faculty who are undertaking open pedagogy projects so students can actively engage in open. And there seems to be a few more every single year and it's starting to build. Next slide, Ken. Thanks. I'd like to highlight some of the support initiatives that TRU has developed that we have to promote opportunities to the community to get involved and to find ways that they can bring open practices into their own teaching and learning. But the key of all of this is outreach. It's getting the message out to new people. It's reminding people who've heard the message before and then welcoming those people into the community wherever they're at. Because when you build awareness, everything starts to grow. Um, whether it's adopting OER, which leads to adapting or creating it, which leads to open pedagogy and other open practices. It's the outreach is what you need to start to build that snowball. Um, so look for opportunities to promote open at your institutions. Uh, our new faculty orientation sessions have a section on open education to get people that are new to the institution to know right up front that open is supported and valued here. We have booths at campus open houses and in non-pandemic times at uh, the student barbecues. Uh, we have an annual teaching practices colloquium event where faculty share their teaching ideas and there are open related sessions at it every single year. For open ed and open access week, we've given out cupcakes, we've had online and in-person sessions, we've had full multi-day events. It totally depends on our capacity at, from year to year, but we always try to do something that's local. And then we also try you know, to present at faculty councils. Our goal is to do it once a year and we'll see how that happens. But as the outreach build, things start to snowball and that's when things lead to change. Our former provost was explicit that she wanted all tenure and promotion standards documents to include a statement of support for work in the open in that particular discipline when they come up for revision. So far, 17 of the 33 standards documents have now include statements of open and the remaining 14 are in the process of being revised. Uh, the other big change is, as open education librarian, I did an inventory of every single campus course in the fall of 2020 and the winter of 2021 semesters to identify all of the courses that were either zero textbook costs and or using OER. And I reviewed data from the banner registration system, our bookstore, and what had been self-identified to BC campus. And when I compiled it all, I found that there was very little overlap in information, and it also missed courses that I knew for a fact were OER or ZTC. So I shared my findings with the University librarian, the provost, and Ken and I included it in our presentations to the faculty councils in winter 2021. And that led to a meeting with me, the university librarian, open learning, the registrar's office, and the bookstore, where we all agreed that the information should be centralized, accessible, transparent, and highlighted. So the registrar's office agreed to create a formal structure to obtain this information and then mark courses in the banner system so that students could identify their ZTC courses at the point of registration and then share all of that compiled information out to the bookstore and to the library. So, but we wanted to get support. So then we presented our plan to three standing Senate committees, our student success, teaching and learning, and international affairs committees. 
But for all the outreach to have any traction, you need to have supports to provide ways to connect with each other, to share ideas, frustrations, and build that capacity and community. And it's all about providing links so that people know who they can reach out to and to find out what support is available. So we have, we have set up all of our support connections to be related and interconnected. We want to provide mentorship, advocacy, library support, um, communities of practice and um, collaboration opportunities and through our grants to provide course release or monetary compensation for the development. But as an open education librarian, the bulk of my job is to support open at TRU. Mostly it's finding OER and navigating Creative Commons, but I'm also part of all of the other supports that are listed on this page. And I actively look for ways to connect with people who are interested in open and then supporting them. But I'm not really unique. Most of the various support connections have some overlapping members so that many people are involved in various different arms of open support. It's just that my job is in particularly uh, devoted to it. So I'm going to let the rest of our team share more about our open education working grant, our communities of practice and our OER development grant. Right, and so We'll start with just our open education working group. Um, you know, as you may have surmised over the course of doing things, um, a lot of it was just organically done um, and people developing things. And, and it got to a point in time where we had to really uh, rationalize and try to grow everything by collecting all of that together. Um, so we developed our open education working group, which was again, to foster and support a culture of inclusive open education initiatives. Um, and through that group, um, we have meetings. Um, the chair and the vice chair are elected by the membership on a on a on a yearly basis, uh, or on a, actually a bi bi yearly basis. So there's always some turnover, and, and also some continuity. Um, and so inspired by some of the faculty council. Um, uh, presentations which Brenda and I made, we came up with our open education atom. So the nucleus being open education and the four electrons circle, circling the, the nucleus are um, OER textbooks, OER resources, including open textbooks, open publishing, open research practices, and open pedagogy. And so we found that we'd moved beyond just textbooks and, and those sorts of things. There's many accesses to open publishing. There's really good adoption of open research practices, which are now being required by uh, SHRC grants and those sorts of things. And then, like Brenda said, open pedagogy and open practices. People were doing these things on campus, but there wasn't a format to share all of those activities. So through these communities of practice that we've started in each of the electrons, we have faculty again coming together, learning and sharing resources. Um, and then we also uh, responded to external events. And so uh, we responded to a request for proposal from uh, Kwantlen actually to join uh, the UN uh, Sustainable Development Goals Open Pedagogy Fellowship, which links faculty from three BC universities and four US-based community colleges in the creating of interdisciplinary and reusable assignments. Um, the project as a whole has 44 faculty uh, covering 14 of the 17 UN SDGs. And from TRU, we have seven faculties, which are uh, in including uh, roughly 100 students in all of the courses. So if you're interested in learning more about this partnership, you can contact Dr. Michael Mills or there's a, a website uh, which um, is, is available as well. So the next part of our work, um, many of you, uh, if you're at Cascadia in the spring, you might have heard us talk about the OERDG program. Um, what it is, is a funding scheme that we have here at TRU to support faculty who wish to adopt, adapt, create, or integrate OER as primary materials within their TRU courses. So this isn't just open textbooks, it also includes supplementary materials, uh, software, or revisions of previously um, created materials. So uh, the funds can be used for course release, hiring research assistants, uh, adding technical expertise, or also uh, some faculty take it as a financial incentive. Um, one of the challenges with this, um, this project is that it is jointly administered. So it is 
um, jointly administered by the library, Center for Excellence in Learning and Teaching, Open Learning Division, and the Grant Steering Committee has uh, multiple stakeholders on it. But that challenge is also an opportunity in that it really does represent the way that this is networked and connected across the university. And so we're hoping that this project is going to continue forward and we're gonna be able to find some funding to continue it because we've had so far 31 funded projects and we'll have 34 by next week. Um, the, the key part of the open education uh, development grant program is the open education facilitator. And we were hoping Christine was gonna be here to talk about her role because she's really the navigator of the open process. And this is the thing I think that is the most critical component of the success we've had and the overwhelming response we've had to these grant applications. And so that person, the OER facilitator is a faculty member that we've released uh, from two courses to teach or to, to facilitate the development of the open education grant process. And so this person is somebody who's gone through it on their own and they're able to navigate press books, um, the range of different options for open and work as a faculty peer to faculty members who have got or going through this for the first time. So the person offers, so Christine, who's doing it right now, offers support for applicants, workshops and connections to other services but also has a wider understanding of the landscape of other funding opportunities that might be available too, often through BC campus or other um, uh, you know, discipline specific groups. Within that as well, we've had uh, a number of really interesting projects that have come forward that have focused on uh, equity, diversity, and inclusion and being responsive to that within open education resources and open practices. In terms of uh, EDI and OER, Equity for us re refers to the removal of systematic barriers, including the cost and access issues to resources. Diversity rep is a representation of a diverse range of people, perspectives, and lived experiences. And inclusion is about ensuring that all people are valued and supported. So four of the projects we wanted to highlight are our stock photo collection of Indigenous people in education, uh, implementing truth and reconciliation calls to action, a textbook for the faculty of law, uh, a history textbook on the history of Indigenous peoples in Canada, and then a biology textbook looking at localization and internationalization. So we do, as a adjudication committee, look for opportunities to promote OER that uh, go beyond open to also be inclusive. So uh, providing the different support connections to us demonstrates our commitment to supporting faculty and choosing how they teach, to providing representation, currency, localization, student faculty engagement, and to grow our open culture here. And it seems to be working. Uh, roughly 36% of core sections in the past academic year were ZTC, according to the inventory that I did. I don't have the fall 2021 numbers yet. Um, over the years, we've had, we are estimating that there's been over 40, 40 OER created at TRU and many more adapted and adopted. So we've had over 60 OER grants, although applications, even though we were only able to fund half of them. And even with our, our latest round, we have uh, eight people that applied for three grants, which is going to be a difficult decision to have to make. Um, and TRU faculty have been awarded over the years over 23 BC campus grants to support open. And at TRU, we're estimating that over 465 faculty have individually engaged in open in some direct way. So providing the many opportunities and avenues for people to enter the world of open and providing support at the point of need or want uh, in a way that it values inclusion, transformation, sharing and connection as it relates to consultant house is our guiding principle at TRU and how we have sought to grow and sustain a culture of open over the years. So Chris Chechen. So are there any questions? Seeing any questions so far? <laughs> Terry, I like the other uh, 
other acronyms for SPLOT. I remember many years ago, Brian and Alan did a session where they actually had a slide with a different meanings for the for the acronym and it had like 12 different suggestions of what SPLOT could mean. <laughs> questions for us. I have questions for others around how their uh, grant programs may be running in a similar or different fashion or how their campuses or campuses connected to OER in different ways. Because I think as much as one of the reasons um, we wanted to share what we're doing, but we also really want to learn from everyone else and find out what we could be doing better to encourage uh, diverse participation. Thanks, Sarah. It was nice to hear their voices of everybody coming in. We were happy to be able to include them. I think that was something we missed actually saying at the beginning. I missed saying at the beginning, and I, that's my fault, is that as much as the four of us and Christine, who wasn't able to make it, um, were presenting, this is, um, there. you know, we could have worked with uh, 50 other people probably on campus and asked them to come and present about these projects because there is that really level, high level of involvement and engagement. Maybe not 50, but probably like, Brendan, Ken, what would you say? like? 20 other people would be equally adept at presenting sort of the range of experiences yeah. or have had some entry point into this where they'd be able to provide their own, own experiences at a high level. Oh, thanks, Brianne. Um, you're more than welcome. Everybody can get in touch with us if they want. Our emails are on the front, but if you can't remember that, you can always uh, email kelt at tru.ca, C-E-L-T, and I can feed that out to the rest of the group. Um, I'll throw that in the chat if you want more information about it. You know, I, I think it's just worth mentioning, you know, that, that the, the growth has always been supported, uh, you know, at an institutional level. And, and you know, right now we're, we're in a situation where we're having a, a search for a, a new provost. And, and we are a little bit concerned that, you know, the open initiatives that we've started are not going to be as well supported. And so, um, you know, we're in the midst of a pretty serious lobbying um, mo movement towards making sure that in that next search, um, questions about uh, the new person's or the candidate's expertise in open is going, are going to be asked and they're going to be evaluated as part of, of the job. Um, so, you know, it's never ending. There's always challenges, but um, that institutional level of support is what we need to see right now in, in our, where we're at, um, because the grant funding program has not been institutionalized. And, and that's the thing where we can really show uh, some, some really imp good impact locally in terms of um, our faculty involvement, um, like, um, Catherine said, you know, we've supported about 30, but we've had 60 applications. And in this last round, where we're going to be evaluating for three um, proposals or accepting three proposals, we have eight submissions. And so it, it just shows that again, like the snowball is getting bigger, like in Brenda's picture. And, and you know, you just always need to be at it. There's, there's no sitting back and expecting these things to continue to happen on their own. And I also think it helps as you make connections, you can share the load. So it's not just one or two people that are being always the voice and always the connection because you can get tired and burn out. So having um, multiple people to share the load, it helps you share the load, but it also keeps you inspired because you have someone to bounce ideas off of. And so sometimes when you're in an institution, some people have commented on that they're just kind of getting started. It's starting to build your community, whether your community is at your institution, but sometimes before your community is at your institution, you have to reach out to others at other institutions to help for that support. So that's the making those connections, whether it's internally at your institution or it's externally through with other institutions. Like if you want to contact us, we're more than welcome to talk to you about what we've done and what we wish we'd done differently and things like that. But um, it just, that I think that's a way to, to really view it is that you really need to have connections and support to do to succeed and move forward. I'm going to throw a link in the chat too because I think we've developed a good uh, system for the OER grants. Um, and so this is on Brenda's LibCal page, but um, a framework if you're looking for frameworks to develop a grant program, um, which is again is something that does take resources, we do have a, a budget for that, but 
certainly uh, having really clear instructions we found has made the process much more streamlined for everyone. Um, and every, we've done this six times now. So we've worked out, I just, I just organized them this morning and put them out for adjudication. So it's a pretty, um, takes about an hour now. I just like actually, three hours. I, I hid the, the documents that we have to them fill out just because. Oh, okay. So if you're interested in seeing them, please let me know. And I'm more than happy to share the um, individual documents for what you're, the budget, you're creating a budget and a timeline and uh, scoping out the project. Because since we're not doing it right now, I just hit it. <laughs> yeah, and, and if you want to download the presentations and the H5P file, there's links in those documents to a variety of the, the websites that we use both internally and externally and those sorts of things. So. They're available that way as well. I just threw a link in there too to Christine's toolkit um, yeah. and the, with the open education resource grants and uh, information with the working group as well. So again, we try to make it as findable as, po as possible so that people who can, can catch up on what's been done before, they get to see some examples of what's been successful, um, you know, in the spirit of open, making sure that what people are creating, it, it, you know, is open to other applicants and to their students later on. So trying to promote that on their behalf too. What we're really trying to move in more is that it's, that open is not just open textbooks. So we want to support, or we are want to support open textbooks, but we're increasingly becoming more involved in supporting open pedagogy and other open practices. So it's sort of a way that we're sort of um, moving that we want to continue, but we also want to build what we're doing as well and support people who want to become involved in different parts. Uh, TRUSU is not part of the grant process anymore. They were huge uh, supporters in getting it in the first place, but they are not involved in the administration of the grant um, at this point. They do um, promote it and they're big supporters of it, but they aren't actually on the steering committee or anything like that. One thing that we do try to do in the grant process when we actually are adjudicating is we really um, look to see that we try to um, have a broad spectrum of of different faculties and schools, different levels from whether it's um, adult basic education to law. So we try to have it at different, you know, first year, second year, third year, we try to have that. Um, so we, we try to include new voices. So it's not always the same people that are getting the grant. We try to, so we try to spare it, to space it out and to be as um, inclusive as possible to different projects and voices and disciplines and, types of um, courses as well. All right, well, the, the numbers are, are dwindling and so I'm not sure uh, if we have more time or more questions, more comments. Christine will be mortified that she didn't make it. Okay, well, thank you, Arisima. Thank you, Scott. Thank you everyone for coming. We really appreciate you taking the time to join us today. Do feel free to reach out. We're very uh, excited to share this with people. We might talk your ear off, but um, there's lots of, of exciting things that we have on the go, and we're always too happy to share the resources we've developed to make it easier for everyone else. Thank you to all the presenters. Um, have a nice day. Thank you. Yeah, Clint, if um, I posted it in the area where it said to upload things from my uh, profile, if you don't see it or if you can't uh, pick it up, then um, let me know and I'll just email it to you directly.